perpetrate any further assaulting. The first thing we have to do is identify the charges. So silver you should look up and find out if silver is plus one, if that little diagonal silver is being aluminum, one for three. Nitrate, negative one. Sodium, plus one. And sulfate, hopefully you never look up an polyatomic ion sheet, negative two. So we'll put the positive ion from one chemical, take the negative ion out of the other chemical, and the sodium ion will go with the nitrate ion. So next step, we have to balance our charges to make them add up to zero. So on the silver with the sulfate, we have a plus one and a negative two. We need to make that add up to zero, and the only way to do that is to have a G2SO4. So just balancing the charge get our substance. On the sodium and the nitrate, we see it's already balanced out to zero, so we're good. Now we have to balance the overall reaction. Let's look at our silver. We have one on the left, two on the right, so we need a two in front of the HNO3. Now nitrate, because of the coefficient here, we have two nitrates on the left, and we have one on the right, so I'm going to put a coefficient of two in front of the NaNO3. Sodium, over here we have two, and over here we now have three. Sulfate, we have one, and over here we have one. So, our whole thing is completely balanced, we're good there. Now I just check my solubility rules. Nitrates are always soluble, so this chemical is soluble. Alkali metals are always soluble, so this chemical is also soluble. Silver sulfate, okay, there's that sulfate rule I emailed to you. Silver sulfate is actually insoluble. I did not include silver in one of the ions that makes sulfate insoluble, but this is an exception. So I'll email that to you again to correct that. Some books do not say this is insoluble. Some books do say this is insoluble. It's because it's right around the 0.1 molar cutoff where this becomes insoluble. So it really depends where you look to check if silver sulfate is insoluble. So actually, soluble or insoluble could be accepted as the correct answer on that one. Unfortunate. All right, last one, sodium with nitrate, always soluble. Okay, 21B. First, we have to check the charges. Barium is in the plus two column of the alkaline or of metals. Chlorine is in the negative one column. Again, we use that diagonal rule. Things are always plus two when it's an ion. Sulfate. So four, negative two. All right, done with step one. Put the positive ion, positive ion goes in the front. Put the negative ion from the other reaction. And as soon as there's our other positive ion, this will go with the chlorine, the negative ion. We don't carry the substrates over to the product side. We use the charges, the charges here to figure out what the substrates are going to be. We do carry over the subscripts of the polyatomic ion. All right, so barium sulfate, we see plus two and minus two already adds up to zero. We are good. The zinc and the chloride, we have a plus two, a negative one, which means we need how many chlorines? That's right, we need two of them. So now I have balanced my charges to get my subscripts, and the next step is to balance the reaction. I've got one barium on the left. One on the right, we're good. I've got two chlorines on the left. I've got two chlorines on the right. We're good there too. Zinc, one on the left, one on the right. Everything is looking really good here. Sulfate, one on the left, one on the right. So it's already balanced. I didn't really need to do anything. Last step, let's check for solubility. If you look at your solubility rules, you'll see there's not much about barium. It's listed in a couple places, but Chlorines, there is a rule about chlorides. Chlorides are soluble with a couple of exceptions, but barium is not one of them, therefore this chemical is soluble. Zinc sulfate. I emailed you the rule about sulfate. There are, these sulfates are generally soluble. There are some exceptions, but zinc is not one of them, therefore this chemical is soluble. Barium sulfate. Sulfate rules again. 
Buckwheats are generally soluble. However, barium is an exception. Therefore, this chemical is insoluble. Last one. Chloride. Soluble. Certain exceptions, but zinc is not one of them. Therefore, zinc chloride is indeed soluble. Okay, 21C. First, we're going to look at the ammonium carbonate. And we have to, again, check the charges. That's our first step. Ammonium, you're going to need to look this up on the polyatomic ion sheet. And the charge is plus 1. CO3, hopefully you're starting to recognize and get comfortable with these. Carbonate, negative 2. Calcium is an alkaline earth metal. It is in the plus 2 column. Chlorine is a halogen in the negative 1 column. So we have completed step 1. All right. Next thing is we're going to put the positive ion in one chemical with the negative ion of the other chemical. We do not bring over the subscript. We don't bring over this 2. But we do bring over the 4 from the NH4 because that's part of the polyatomic ion. We do not bring over the fact that there are two NH4s. That will come into play when we balance the reaction. The other chemical will be the calcium, 2 plus, with the carbonate, 2 minus. All right, now let's balance this reaction. I have two ammoniums on the left. I only have one. Oh, wait, we forgot to balance the subscript. I skipped that step because everything is already balanced. We have two negative two, one negative one. We're good. All right, next step. Two ammoniums on the left, only one ammonium on the right. So what do I need? That's right. I need a two in front of the ammonium chloride on the right side. Let's check our carbonate now. One carbonate on the left, one carbonate on the right. Looks good. One calcium on the left, one calcium on the right. Still good. Two chlorines on the left. Looks like there's only one, but don't forget there's a coefficient here. So in fact, I have two chlorines on the right, and we are done. This is balanced. Now I check my solubility rules. Ammonium ions. All ammonium ions are soluble. That is rule one. Therefore, this is soluble. You could also look at the rule about carbonates, which says they are insoluble except with alkali metals and ammonium ions. Therefore, this is still soluble. There's a rule about chlorides. Chlorides are soluble with some exceptions. Calcium is not one of those exceptions. Therefore, this chemical is indeed soluble. Anything with ammonium is soluble. Carbonate is insoluble. So check the exceptions. Calcium is not one of the exceptions. Therefore, calcium carbonate is insoluble. Moving on, 23A, we have sodium nitrate and copper 2 sulfate. And we want to find out, will a reaction happen if we mix these two solutions together? Same exact process. Find your charges. Okay, copper we don't know for sure, but we know the sulfates will have to add up to... We don't know the sulfates add up. We know we only have one sulfate. The total is negative 2, so the copper total has to be plus 2. Therefore, each copper, which is only 1, is plus 2. Now we put the positive ions with the negative ions. Copper 2 with the nitrate. We balance the charges to put in subscripts. So we get our subscripts with balancing the charges. Over here we have a plus 2 and a negative 1. In order to balance that to 0, I need two nitrates. Now I check my solubility rules, and I'm just going to check the products here. Alkali metals, always soluble. Nitrates, always soluble. Therefore, for 21A, there is no reaction. Nothing happens. We mix these two solutions together, and they remain clear. No party precipitates. 23E, we put together barium chloride. plus 2 column or in the negative 1 column. Potassium plus 1 column. Sulfate 
could have done that right up here. We already did that one. So that's a little too easy. So it's positive with the negatives. Negative plus. Here's our small number. The charges are already balancing out to zero, so I don't need to change any subscripts. Notice I did not carry the subscripts for the potassium or the chlorine over to the product side. So we don't carry over subscripts unless they're part of a polyatomic ion. Now we need to balance our reaction. One barium, one barium, we're good. Two chlorines, only one chlorine. Therefore, what do I need to do? Correct, I need to put a two inside of potassium chloride. Keep checking. Potassium, two on the left. Oh, left one's got two potassiums on the right side. One sulfate, one sulfate. We are balanced. We're good. Now I'm going to check my solubility rules just for my products. And we looked at barium with sulfates. Sulfates are generally soluble. However, there are some exceptions. Barium is one of them. So this will just be extremely soluble. Potassium is an alkali metal. All ionic compounds that contain alkali metals are soluble. Do we have a reaction? Does this form an insoluble substance? Yes. It's a reaction of 